Hey there gang, Patrick King here, coming to you live from Lesage, West Virginia, teaching a clinic here this weekend for uh, or with the Heart of Phoenix Equine Rescue. Question today comes from Kelly, and Kelly asks us, what's the point of a martingale? <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers on this one, I'm sure. So, did a little bit of research for this. We've come up with a few different martingales in case you are not maybe familiar with them. Um, the English version, we've got a standing martingale. There's a Western version of this, also known as the tie-down. We've got in the English version a running martingale. The Western version of this would be known as maybe a set of training forks, okay, very similar. Um, German martingale, uh, also known as the Market Harborough. Um, in Western, we just refer to that as the German Martingale. And then there's kind of a quasi half Martingale, also known as the Irish Martingale, that kind of works completely differently. So, uh, yeah, so like I said, I might ruffle some feathers with this. Um, doing some research, we did find uh, a little bit more information in a very interesting book uh, by an Englishman named Richard Berenger. Uh, the book is titled The History and Art of Horsemanship. Uh, it was written in 1771, and I think it's pretty interesting. I'm going to read to you an excerpt from that book. Um, so this is looking like chapter 10 on this book of horsemanship, The Martingale, invented by a man named Evangelista, an eminent horseman of Milan, the city in Italy, uh, is a long strap or thong of leather, the one end of which is fastened to the girth between the forelegs uh, and the other to the bit, which is a better way, or could have a thin mouthpiece of its own. So this leather strap he's talking would either connect to the bit or would actually strap around the jaw. <clears throat> Uh, it's in service in cases where the horse tosses his head, turns his muzzle upward, and beats upon the hand, uh, and his head in uncertain and unconstant when his jaws are too tight and when he is stag-necked. That's an old term for what we would now consider to be eunecked. Uh, basically talking about how it'll bring down the nose, settle the head, uh, bringing him into a posture. Uh, any quotes in here? Nevertheless, a rather rude and compulsive implement. The faults above mentioned, being rather desperate, require a desperate remedy. Basically saying, if your horsemanship isn't good enough, you're going to use gadgets. Okay, so again, as I said, probably going to ruffle some feathers with that idea. Are there other pieces or other moments when I might say it's acceptable for me or maybe other horsemen may say it's acceptable to use some sort of a martingale idea. I can think of one. Pretty much when you're first learning to ride and you're on a stubborn little pony that's kind of hard mouth and you're riding that little pony learning how to ride uh, because he's a little stubborn and hard mouth. So the martingale might keep you from getting you know, hit in the face. Those, uh, some of those stubborn little ponies are, I shouldn't even say stubborn, because I don't like that word when it comes to horses, but those little ponies have learned how to unseat riders by lifting their heads and throwing their heads down and things like that, because basically the riders are too small uh, to be effective in educating those ponies any other way. Um, that'd be about the only time I would say it's okay to use one of those to keep a young rider safe when they're learning how to ride. Otherwise, we've got plenty of arguments about why you might use one. All of them are garbage, as far as I'm concerned. We hear riders talking about horses leaning onto them to balance themselves. Say barrel racers, that's a common thing to hear them say, so that the horse can rebalance himself by leaning onto it. All those martingales are going to do, in any sense of those martingale words or functions or features or however you want to use them, is cause the horse to lower the head and lean on the forehand. Okay? That's perfectly fine if you want your horse to be on the forehand. All right? Uh, and if you don't want to learn how to teach him to be a little bit better. The biggest idea that uh, I hope to impart, and again, I said, 
I'm probably ruffling some feathers with this. You can send me hate mail. You can you can click on the angry face button if you'd like to. I don't mind. Uh, it basically comes down to a lack of horsemanship, which again, completely acceptable in young riders beginning to learn how to ride. Unacceptable in anyone else as far as I'm concerned. So, hate mail away. <laughs> um, question of the day today. Boy, I'm on a rant, and the use of that stuff kind of gets my feathers ruffled. What type of gear gets your feathers ruffled? We're going to keep the comments polite, but post your answers to that question of the day in the comment section below. Please feel free to share this video, tag your friends, send it along, uh, any of that great stuff. Don't forget, you keep asking questions, I'll keep giving answers. Thanks, guys.